Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Hewitt. It's good to speak to you. Um, do you do you view this decision with kind of mixed feelings? No, I, I, yeah, in a sense, yes, I accept the Barbados' journey to the Republic is about a natural progression of a country coming into its own and really signifying, as was stated, to the world that we have come of age. I tell people it's an analogy to when our children grow up, get their own place and give us back the house keys. However, I think the question is, how did we go about it? Because in the Constitutional Commission's recommendations, they suggested that Barbados have a consultative process with its citizens, have a referenda to really ensure that becoming a republic, which is really by definition a government of the people, that the people are actively involved in this process. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 and the devastation economically and socially and all of the restrictions, Barbadians have not been able to participate in this journey that ultimately should have started with them and concluded with them. Um, in terms of timing, I mean, Barbados gained its independence from Britain in 1966. It was one of the first uh, Caribbean nations after Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago to do so. Many would say, look, this has been a, a, the next step and it's kind of long overdue, not just in Barbados, but in many of the other islands of the Caribbean as well. But as I say, I, I respect this, the decision and the journey that we are taking. The only problem is, is that the timing is slightly off, not because of anything the government has, has done in a sense, but because of the restrictions that COVID-19 has placed on Barbadians being able to participate in this journey. So it almost becomes a decision by the government for the people rather than a journey of the people as manifested by the actions taken by the government. Do you think uh, events of the past few years have accelerated? The, the, the kind of momentum for this. I'm thinking obviously of the controversy of the Windrush generation, some of whom would have been Bayesian people who had who kind of were treated as if they didn't belong in the UK. Uh, some of the arguments over post-colonialism and Black Lives Matter, the issue of reparations, which Mia Motley herself brought up at CARICOM, uh, the uh, organization of um, Caribbean countries only a few months ago. Yes, I mean, we, we would have recognized that because again, as was referenced by the Prime Minister, Her Majesty is held in such high regard across the Commonwealth, people would have been reluctant to take action at this time that might have been seen as personal. And I don't think in any way this is a slight on her, but what would have happened in the last three, four years, as you referenced, the Windrush scandal, which in a sense put the, Her Majesty as the Queen of the United Kingdom and Queen of Barbados in a difficult position because the nations that she represents were at variance. The Black Lives Matter movement that made people conscious of, of the colonial history more recently and in Barbados, we took down the statue of Lord Nelson, which predates the one at Trafalgar Square, as you spoke about the issues of reparations. There have been a number of things that have been catalytic in terms of making people ask the question, does the royal family reflect where a young country should be in the 21st century? And in that regard, I think that those, those events may have been catalytic in causing us to move faster than we may have otherwise, but it is for me, a necessary journey that we take as a country. The Caribbean Prime Minister I remember from my childhood is Eugenia Charles, the late Eugenia Charles from Dominica, who was, became an international figure. Um, Mia Motley is fast approaching that kind of status in the world. People in other parts of the world listen when she goes to international events, she makes speeches about the Caribbean. Is it possible that what is happening now in Barbados will act as a catalyst for other countries currently in the Commonwealth, particularly in the Caribbean, to look to their own futures independent of the British Crown? I anticipate that Barbados has opened a door that other countries now will consider going through. No one likes to be first, 
And now that Barbados has done this in our in this contemporary period, other countries within the, the Caribbean and I think across the Commonwealth who currently hold on to, to the Her Majesty as the head of state might consider having taken this journey as well. I've done interviews in Australia, in the mm -hmm. Canada, and I know there is a growing appetite to ask the question, is it not time for us as Barbados is doing to have a native citizen as our head of state? Guy Hewitt, former Barbadian High Commissioner to the UK. Very good to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for allowing me to join you all. As Malcolm Turnbull, the former Prime Minister of Australia, put it, um, we may be uh, Elizabethans, we're not necessarily monarchists. Seems to be the case there as well.